Good morning. What an awesome privilege to come and visit a little bit with you in the Word. I want to ask Holy Spirit this morning to dispel all wrong notions I may carry in my heart regarding our Father God. I want to share with you on the unveiling of the heart of our God. Um, for years, um, I think all of us, for years have been exposed to religion and, and uh, the touch of religiosity, if I could coin a word like that. And God wants to, He wants to move in. He wants to come and dwell and He wants to dispel any notion I have that He's a distant God. Jesus came to set us free. So let me start off by sharing a little story in a, 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 a short story written by Ernest Hemingway in the early 50s called The Capital of the World. Um, uh, Hemingway pictures a typical scenario in a, in a home where a teenage son and father uh, had some blow-ups and eventually the blow-ups got too big for the teenage son to handle and he left home. He packed his stuff, left home. It wasn't long for father to develop remorse and he started seeking his son and eventually after a month or so he had no success. He had carried a picture with him but nobody knew where Paco, his son, was. Eventually, after an unfruitful search, he placed an article in a local newspaper and, and the article read as, as follows. He says, Paco, Meet me at noon next Tuesday at the Montana Hotel. All is forgiven. On Tuesday, Dad arrived in the street leading up to the hotel to find a crowd mingling outside the hotel and lots of policemen. Eventually, getting close to the hotel, he, he uh, tapped the sh a policeman on the shoulder and asked him, what's going on? And the policeman said, 800 Parkos arrived at the hotel to seek reconciliation, to seek forgiveness with their fathers. This remains the cry of the human heart. My father, my dad, I wish. So if I could make a point number one, I would like to say the influence of a father figure. You see, psychology teaches us that the image of uh, God I carry with me in my heart was an image my father left on me. The very first pictures I have of God were painted by my own dad. He might have been absent, aggressive, domineering. So, so it leads to the reality that I would experience God as absent. Uh, I'm not important. God is angry. Just for a moment, remember all the pictures we have of God in the Old Testament. Seems like he's an angry God. It's always fire and smoke and stuff. Judgment. And then, then we go to church and on the pulpit there's a little cloth that says, God is love. This is a maze that I find myself in. Which is the right direction? He's angry. He's, he, he wants to punish. No, no. God is love. You see, the biggest problem on earth is not sin. It is living with the wrong perception of God. If we had time to look at Job, for instance, Job attributed all his adversity to God. In Job chapter 1, we read that there's a discussion between God and Satan. It's like God allows us to see something in the heavenlies. And Satan says, if I take away this and this and this from Job, he will fail you. He will turn his back on you. And God says, my servant Job, he's faithful above all men. I trust him. You can do to him. Go, go ahead, make my day. And so Job's house burns down, his cattle die, um, his children are uh, 
somehow disappear. It's, it's a day of disaster in Job's life. And he writes in chapter 1, verse 21, he writes the following. From his vantage point, from his perspective, he writes the following. He says, the Lord has given and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You see, this little sentence appears in every funeral uh, service. Because we have a wrong perspective of God. Job didn't understand. And, and at the end of the book, some theologians say it took him 17 months to work through this. But a, a whole time later, Job writes in chapter 42, he says, Oh God, forgive me. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes have seen you and I understand. Forgive me. In other words, in a, in a short time span, James, Job came to a correct perspective of God. You see, Dad never just hugged me. Because I'm a man. You will turn me into a sissy. That's how he thought. That's how he was raised. Dad never just sat down on the carpet with me in my room and had a, a lovely chat with me. I, I, I just heard him like a sergeant major walking through the house. Is your room again looking like a big sty? I'm never going to get through to you. Now imagine this youngster go to, goes to church. Here he's introduced to a bunch of leaders, spiritual leaders, who have no concept of God as Father. He now gets introduced to a set of rules and regulations in church. The place where he's supposed to see the curtains open and the unveiling of God as Father. No. See, here's the tragedy. Religion leads me away from God. Our dads never had relationships with their fathers. And if we could go back far enough in history, in the garden we lose father and Satan becomes a substitutional dad. He's just the opposite of father. He's loveless. He's filled with hatred, with murder, jealousy, criticism. It, it, it's like in this new dimension or this new picture I have of God, this new image I carry with me, uh, I see this God. He calls an angel and he says, I, I want you to take uh, down some notes about Cornet. He has made some messes and, and I, I will sort him out later, but just write his name down in the book. And, and so this idea lingers. Satan knows that my home experience will paint an inner picture of God. He desires that we will fear God, that we will distrust God, that we will eventually ignore God because that's, that's the goal. Ignore Him. Now my rebellion aimed at my father becomes a, 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 a secondary rebellion aimed at God. I go through life with huge self-image problems. I look for acceptance everywhere but the right place. I'm wrestling with true love. I eventually design crutches. We saw that last Sunday. Crutches that assist me to cope. Crutches like puffs, pints, porn, all these things to just, not to, to make me victorious, but to make me cope. I cannot turn to God because I see Him as the source of my disaster. See, God will never just embrace me. He is out to preach at me. And he wants to correct me and he wants to punish me. I wonder where we get this picture from. Maybe our parents' home, maybe school, maybe church. My perceptions are all out of line. In my struggle, I, I end up with booze, with sex, and I become a terrible communicator. And, and I'm married and my marriage fails. I wound children. And there's a new generation. A new generation, a generation that does not know real love, has no understanding of something like a healthy family. Let's focus a little bit on a son this morning. The son asks his mother, Mom, can, I, can you ask Dad if I could use the car on Saturday night? He has no confidence to approach his dad himself. He uses Mom as a buffer. My frustration with this dad leads to rebellion. Eventually, I develop a bad temper. 
Still later, this pain could lead me to homosexualism. And in this process, there's a mom that tries to make up for dad's failure and she gives him all the attention. She teaches him how to cook and how to bake and do things with her. And masculinity becomes ugly to me. If we put a daughter in that picture, look at this. The daughter feels... Uh, uh, if I w wore more masculine clothes and fashion, my dad will think I'm somebody special because my dad loves the, the boy. He always says, he, I wish I had another boy. And so, so she starts dressing to try and appease him. Sophia Loren, one of the famous actresses, says that she only saw her father three times. Some three brief encounters with her father. No wonder you will find that Sophia Loren marries in her life three old dudes because she was looking for a father. I want to close the session with you, reading with you from Luke chapter 15. And once again, I want to play this part. I want to say to you, the most beautiful scripture in Bible. Psalm 84 is the most beautiful scripture. No, Psalm 23 is the most beautiful. No, Psalm 139. I want you to see that wherever you open this book, God wants to speak to you. He wants to address your heart. My second point, my final point, forgiveness sets me free. Can I read Luke chapter 15? Jesus is speaking and... and, and for me, it's, it's so vivid. It's so real. It's like Jesus is sitting with the disciples and, and, and some listeners and he draws away the curtain that hid Father God from humanity. And it's like he's, he's here this morning. He, he, he wants to meet with you. Let me read to you what this what does Jesus dared saying about God? Now, now Luke the, records this piece of history like this. He says, verse 1, Now the tax collectors, the notorious and especially wicked sinners, were all coming near to Jesus to hear him, to listen to him. Can you see this picture? The Son of God, the Holy One of Israel, doesn't offend sinners. He, do, he doesn't intimidate a, require, a, a acquiring heart, a, a seeking sol, soldier, a desperate son, a broken daughter. He, he, he doesn't push anybody away. The baddies, listen, what church is full of baddies? What church is built on the premise that this is a home for the seeking? I want you to see him. He's different. He's different from the pictures we carry in our hearts of him. He doesn't push away. He attracts. He's... he's it's like that magnet that draws especially wicked people, says the Amplified. Doesn't his love just invite us? Doesn't his love just expose us to somebody so different from all the pictures we have in our homes? Yeah, we have a picture of of this Jesus with a little lamb in his hands. Oh, what a beautiful picture. And then dad would sit underneath the picture at the dinner table and shout at me. Next verse. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees had issues. The religious people had issues. They said, how can this man of God, how can this rabbi mix in the street how can he share his life with notorious sinners uh, something's wrong here because religion doesn't understand beloved i'm here to take you beyond religion 
And in my many years of ministry to broken hearts, broken boys, broken girls, broken men, broken women, I've discovered that the, the key that will release me from a wrong father image is forgiveness. I have to begin by forgiving my grandpa, my father, that teacher, maybe my husband. I have to begin by releasing them to God so that I can be set free. You see, these acquiring sinners, they came to get freed, get liberated, to embrace. I want to bring you to that place this morning through forgiveness. Come pray with me. Let's be just honest and open this morning. Say, say with me, say, Heavenly Father, I understand this morning that I'm angry. Somehow, I ended up angry with you, my God, Jesus. I ended up distrusting you. I ask you this morning, to forgive me that I harbored all these wrong ideas and pictures in my heart. Forgive me, my Father. Forgive me, my Lord. I also sit with a problem, Lord, that I, for many years, had anger in my heart, and I still have anger in my heart toward my Father. I have anger in my heart towards my grandfather. I carry anger in my heart towards my husband. I ask you this morning, help me to forgive, oh God, for whatever wrong, small wrong, huge, big wrong, whatever wrong was done to me, I ask you to help me this morning to forgive. I'm going to lead you in the next phase of our prayer. I'm going to lead you to say this person's name. And I ask you to speak out that name loud. Okay? Follow me. Say, my Father in heaven. My Father in my heart. My Father right here. I forgive. Speak that person's name out now. Say again, I forgive. And I release my whole life from all the bondage of harboring negative thoughts and maybe in some, some stages of hate. forgive that person this morning my father in fact Holy Spirit Lord Jesus I want to bless that person I want to bless him with a discovery of your love my God set us free oh God set me free to be a father set me free to be a mother set me free to be a grandpa a grandma set me free to be a husband a wife that loves with unconditional godly love in Jesus name I ask you Lord thank you for an open curtain I love you Jesus I bless you Jesus Amen